The Housing Secretary, Michael Gove, has announced new planning reforms which have included a new, well-designed, sustainable and beautiful urban court of Cambridge. Beauty lies at the very heart of these changes. The labyrinthine planning system has for far too long favoured big developers that build big, ugly, identikit spaces. And this has inevitably led to nimbyism because people don't want something ugly being built next to them. The solution to nimbyism is beauty. As Roger Scruton once said, if we build beautiful, we could build a second bath on the green belt as nobody would oppose it. So I thought I'd show you some very clear examples of architectural decline in Britain. Once upon a time, Hove Town Hall looked like this. It was opened in 1882 in a neo-Gothic Victorian style designed by Alfred Waterhouse, the same architect who built the Natural History Museum in Kensington, London. A fire sadly burned the building down in 1996, and this is what they built in its place. Ugly, modernist, soul-crushing and spirit-depressing. Taking our journey up to the north of England, here's what Sunderland Town Hall used to look like. Built in 1890 by the local Tillman brothers, it elevated the resident souls and became the heart of the community. By the 1970s, as the local council couldn't decide how to repurpose it, the sad decision was made to demolish it. This monstrosity came in its place, and it was not popular, understandably, with local residents. And to finish on this tragic journey, let's end in Newcastle. This used to be the home of Newcastle Town Council. It had previously been the site of the town's corn market company, completed in 1863. But over time, the building wasn't taken care of, and eventually it was demolished. The council relocated to this particular beast, the Newcastle Civic Centre, built in the late 1960s, laughably a Grade II listed building. These pictures speak for themselves. They show more about beauty. They also show a lack of confidence that the 1890s had in what a country we were and the decline in our understanding of uh, local towns and the power of the regions. All of that was encapsulated in the ugly buildings that were um, built that weren't in harmony with the human spirit. Coming up to date in Tetbury, Gloucestershire, a new development has breathed life into the area. This initiative is a development of 24 houses built on the outskirts of Tet Tetbury, close to King Charles's Highgrove estate. It's built of Cotswold stone and designed to fit in with the surroundings. But perhaps more strikingly, the King, when he was Prince of Wales, spearheaded the building of the incredibly successful village Poundbury. This is indeed the King's greatest creation, known for his love of nature, heritage and beauty, the King managed to include all three aspects here and build this magnificent village. It fits into the landscape and looks just as timeless as some of the villages that have been standing for centuries. And the latest hope comes from His Majesty's Government and its new plans to implement a new urban quarter in Cambridge. GB News's very own deputy political editor, Tom Harwood, got a little bit carried away using artificial intelligence to generate what it could look like. And this is hugely encouraging, and thank you, Tom, for this work. The late Conservative philosopher and co-chairman of the Building Better, Building Beautiful Commission, Roger Scruton, said beauty matters. It's not just a subjective thing, but a universal need of human beings. If we ignore this need, we find ourselves in a spiritual desert. For too long we have been in a spiritual desert in Britain. If these plans are realised, we will find ourselves in a spiritual oasis which could solve the housing crisis.